guys, Terracotta here. Today, we are going to be painting a swallowtail. Now, the swallowtail has five or six hundred varieties in the world, and we're only going to be painting one. This one is called the Old World Swallowtail, and you can tell that by the white and black, kind of like zebra-like variation on the upper wings, and the telltale blue on the lower wings. And of course, those little tags off of the lower wings is where the swallowtail or the dovetail gets its name. Okay, before we go any further, I do want to give a very big shout out and thanks to my friend Tina. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce the name of your channel, but Tina takes great photography of animals and wildlife, mostly birds, and she has given me permission to paint anything I would like off of her channel. And Tina, I am so grateful. So guys, do check her out. Her channel is awesome. So guys, I'm ready to paint. Today I'm using the Fabriano Aquarello Cold Press Watercolor Paper and a minimalistic palette of five colors. So now you can just sit back, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. One of the beauties of watercolor is using water as a carrier for the paint. So what I do on this first layer is to put a sheen of water down in the area where I want the paint to be. And right now, that is going to be all over the butterfly. So I get a really good sheen down. Sometimes I'm applying two or three layers of water. And then I drop in a little bit of pigment, a very watery pigment in some areas, and let the water carry those pigments just around very, very lightly. Now, these pigments are going to dry much lighter than they appear even now, and this is just the base. This is our first layer. So after the first layer, we dry it and move on to layer number two. Then for layer number two, I'm principally going to be painting wet on dry. Now that means my paper is dry, but with a wet brush I'm going to apply that color and then dampen my brush again with a lot of water and no more pigment and drag those colors out so that I get soft blends in that background. Sometimes I may put down water first then drop in a little bit more pigment. But when I do that, that's because I want softer edges. If I want the harder edges, like on the edge of the butterfly, I will almost always be painting wet on dry, just so I can get those sharp, crisp edges.
thinking I want a very light area above the butterfly and the lower left and the upper right I'm going to have as darker corners. Okay, so I'm ready and these are my three colors. Okay, so to paint that background, I already have my three colors kind of hydrated and out on my palette, and so I'm going to wet the entire paper all around that butterfly. I'm not wetting the butterfly at all, just the paper, and I'm getting a nice sheen so that those paints can be carriers in the water in that sheen. Okay, and when I am dropping in those colors, I am going to be putting some darker colors at the top and at the bottom and I'm going to have a diagonal of light and that's going to be a field of flowers or something. I'm not going to be painting lilacs or whatever was in my original painting but I do want a field of flowers that is going to have a lot of white flowers in it. Kind of like in that painting. It's kind of a reference. So gradually I am building up other colors just using those three. Sometimes I have a limeier green, sometimes a more teal blue, but I'm building up those colors. So in that initial time of putting color in the background, I was using a larger brush, and that means I was getting larger detail. And now I've switched to the smaller brush so that I can get more leaf or petal or some more detail in that foliage that I am trying to create. So now that I have built up a good bit of background color, I think it's time to pop in some white flowers. And that field of white flowers is going to be kind of under the swallowtail butterfly. These flowers aren't all going to be facing me. Some of them are going to be facing upwards, some of them are going to be facing downwards. That means I'm going to be doing a lot of side view, the natural view of these flowers. And that's what's creating a bit of realism here. I will eventually put on another layer of the foliage and then more flowers, but that's how to build up the detail. Okay, so now I need to darken the contrast in the corners just so that butterfly will pop. So right now the butterfly is really the focus of this painting, but it looks kind of lost in this light background. So I'm gonna darken the lower left and some areas of the upper right. And you will notice that under the top of the butterfly, it's very light, so it's really good to paint in those antennas. And those antennas and the face is going to pop against that light background. Until now, our painting has primarily been done with cool colors. So if we pop in just hints of some orange here and there, we're going to warm up this painting. So we have a pretty good base of color down in the background, but now we have to pop some contrast. So, in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to put in some cosmos, and just the field of cosmos. Sometimes I will have a very watery paint with just a little pigment, and other times it will be close to neat, meaning a lot of pigment and virtually no water. And that's how I'm creating some contrast in that upper right. And once that darker contrast is in, I want to height the lighter contrast. And I'll paint another layer of white flowers. We 
we are now down to the final details. And there's two things left we have to do. One is to look inside the butterfly and see if we need to sharpen any detail. And the second is to look at the edge of the butterfly because we painted the background, we might have blurred some of the edges. Once we sharpen our edges up, we can say we are proud of our painting. Guys, I hope you enjoyed painting this. If you enjoyed this and you would like to have a full painting of a peacock butterfly, I will have that linked right here. And guys, I hope you have an awesome week and I'll see you again next week.